it's a rare sight to see this car outside, but it's actually probably one of the last times that you're gonna be seeing it here because Chewie's taking the car back home and he's gonna take it for a major overhaul. This is the car that you guys usually see in the background of many of our videos. It's always stored here. But Chewie has plans to turn this into a dedicated weekend track car. So most of the spoon stuff on here is actually coming off the car and going on to one of his other Integras. And he has a whole list of new stuff for this car that he's gonna put on. New brakes, like uh, Lexan glass, carbon hatch and hood and all that good stuff because he really wants to start driving this thing instead of just letting it sit in the shop. He's gonna move one of his other cars over here and then this uh, once Spoon Sports prop that's been sitting in the background of our shop is now going to be a race car. So that's exciting. Kind of set to see it go. Really loved how traditional it looked and everything, but I would also love to see this car put to use. And Chewie knows what he's doing. He's been around Hondas for a long time, so he has a pretty good understanding of how he wants his cars to look and how he wants them to perform. So it should be interesting. It's exciting times over here. I wish I could document it, but I just can't be over at his house documenting his build, so that'd be kind of weird. So we'll just have to see when the car re-emerges. You probably won't even recognize it, honestly. TE37SL Club Edition wheels. Yeah, yeah. Final. the final, final batch. Final, yes, final batch. Yeah. We're done with this. Yeah. yeah, we got other things to do. I'm trying to. More important things to do. Yeah, that's at least that you're always thinking of these things. Yeah. How many wheels are here? Uh, yeah. And no one saw you. Exactly. So that's 100 and this time. I don't know. The reception is really. There's 400 back there. I don't really count. I'm at least giving them some dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah. That's, that's the, 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 the someone got like, the good thing is not like they spoken for, no. not like spoken want, for. Uh, yeah, we didn't get the full order. order. Oh, the, the container, the usual. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, but so what shows okay, on? Yeah. What shows yeah. on our yeah. invoice is not yeah. actually what's here. But like around a hundred. Yeah. Subtle flex. Because he does it with all this work just for a damn photo. Yeah. How long did it take you to put all these stickers on? Uh, last night, we, Mandy and I breezed through it in two and a half hours. Yeah? Are they all in the right place? Yeah. <laughs> last time there was that one. Have <laughs> you ever seen this many T's before at one time? No. It's a beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Even the box ball is nice. Yeah, I want to run through it though. Yeah, do it. Just run the other side. <laughs> other side? So you don't land on the wheels. <laughs> Previous, uh, one of the previous owners, prior to dirt owning the car, decided to use a, uh, a larger diameter uh, math or uh, was it mass airflow sensor uh, mm -hmm. housing, and uh, it gets pretty funny because it, it, essentially what they do, the whoever manufactures that larger diameter housing, 
And anybody who's like fucked with uh, Subarus, uh, any Nissan really, uh, I imagine has like first-hand experience with uh, what happens when you like fucking like, I don't know, like if you like accidentally touch a mass airflow sensor, mm. uh, much less literally change the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the diameter, which, 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 is, which is the, I guess the, the most crucial factor to the sensor itself um, calculating the volume of air coming in. Um, so I guess the idea is since this is uh, individual throttle bodies, they want to just have as little restriction as possible prior to um, the air actually getting into the manifold. And so somebody somewhere makes a larger diameter mass airflow sensor uh, housing. And in order to compensate for the massive change in scaling, there's like a little passive uh, little guy, like mm -hmm. a little, little module guy. No, sorry, module would be uh, too kind. It's, oh, fuck man. I, I bet you if we open that shit up, it's gonna be like two resistors in there. Uh, <laughs> but it's passive. Mm -hmm. How are you supposed to passively scale fluid volume? Like how? Mm -hmm. I don't think you fuck. I don't think you can. Yeah. It just so it's kind of like a shot in the dark, like a band aid to get this thing to kind of work, so that people like get to work the next day after deeply regretting their purchase. Anyways, do you, do you think you changed it because it was broken, or you just wanted to upgrade it? Or was the, it attempted the, upgrade? The previous owner? Yeah. No, it's like a thing. It's like it's like a it's it's a thing in the sense that like it was a product and I also hear that it might have been like semi popular. Yeah. It's like a fucking Furby, dude. <laughs> the product, semi popular. Uh future civilizations will look back and wonder what the fuck we were thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Not like it's a passive it, never mind. I mean, you can't see it here. No, 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 no. So the <laughs> idea of it, the idea of scaling a fluid volume it, with just a, in a passive way. Just in, in, oh, I guess that's kind of what carburetors are, right? Yeah. Yeah. But let's, the thing is, like, a carburetor is... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so this basically, this car... Speaking of carburetors, this car would run better if it was carbureted. So, but... Um, I don't know, me and Dura are weird, so like, we just thought it would be kind of like a... Well, I don't think... I think there's got to be a reason why he kept it on there, aside from just like pure uh, not giving a fuck. Yeah, I think a lack of interest. But for me, it actually created interest, and uh, I want to see if I can actually get this thing to not run like insanely rich from 1,000 to 2,000 RPM. Mm -hmm. uh, Fairly decent from about 3,000 to 4,000 RPM. Really rich from 4,000 to 5,000 RPM, and then clear up above. I, I think that if I put like um, if I if I find it, it's it's how do you say the calibration or whatever is so off right now that I can't hurt it. Mm -hmm. So if I find like a if I just try different size, different shape, uh, it's an inlet restrictor or rather like an inlet uh, like a velocity stack pre-math, uh, I think I might, and then also uh, use the, the, the throttle position sensor as a, as an insanely crude, like, uh, um, fill in the gaps kind of thing. I think I can get it, I think I can actually get it to, uh, well, run as well as like a fucking KA or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I don't know. So for that reason right now, I'm kind of fixated on this. Yeah, then we can finally get it out of here. Yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's how you that's how relationships be. Yep. So in the last vlog, or maybe the other vlog before that one, I introduced the I this concept that I was working on, the it's kinda like a Super Nintendo type of like tribute box I guess like I don't know it was just a fun little project just because I wanted to you know make like a, a Chronicles game like say like in a alternate universe or something where it was possible I thought it'd be cool to just kind of like see what it'd be like to have like a the Chronicles as a video game but more of like a you know 16-bit type of thing 
just because that's what I grew up with in my childhood and uh, it's what I enjoyed growing up playing as a kid. So I thought I'd create this little project just to like, you know, remind myself how far I've come and where I am now in life and just like kind of like uh, mesh that with my childhood, you know? Just to remind myself that even though I'm getting older, I'm still a kid and stuff. But I took it a step further and we're actually going to make a bunch of these so that the, you guys who want them can get a hold of them. Because I know a lot of you guys seem like you were interested in it and it's honestly a lot of fun to do and uh, I further expanded on the concept and the idea. But uh, I went and picked up these boxes recently from Salem. This is a prototype so it looks slightly different. The actual boxes that you guys will be getting will be like similar but a different type of cardstock so it's not as bulky. And uh, there's going to be some stuff inside too. So Salem is the one that's actually responsible for for building and creating the actual boxes themselves. I just came up with the artwork, laid it all out for him according to a template because I got the actual measurements from the original Super Nintendo packaging. But he printed these boxes out for me. I thought he actually needed me to put them together, but I think he wanted to have a little bit of fun with it too. So he ended up putting all these boxes together for me, which I appreciate a lot. So these are the actual production ones that you guys will be getting once they become available. It's, uh, the cardstock is slightly different, it's a little bit thinner. But what, I, what we did differently from the original Super Nintendo boxes is we actually made them a little bit, uh, I guess, wider, taller on the base side of it because, you know, I want them to be, for you guys to be able to display them as just like memorabilia or like, a, you know, as like a hobby toy or whatever. So with the wider base, it allows it to sit upright like that, which is cool. And these all have, they're super detailed. So there's, there's like a code here, a barcode. These actually work. And then full description of stuff, like the artwork from the screenshots from the game. And uh, this is a super fun po project. I just I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, I'm glad that I got such a good reception from it, you know? I like it when people enjoy my creativity, I guess you can say. And with this little project, you guys will get to keep you know, a little bit of me, I guess you can say, because I put so much time and effort into it. And uh, over the last week or so, I've put a lot of work into it and did a lot of research and you won't be getting just a box, which is cool. And that's the good news. So the cool thing about making this whole little project is that half the fun has just been sourcing all the Merch materials, I guess you can see, and putting it together. So I was able to find these replacement NES cartridges to kind of uh, give that real cartridge feel, you know, just to make it seem like it's an actual game. Just to prove to you guys there's nothing inside. There's no game inside, so don't ever feel slighted if you got one that doesn't have a chip inside because, again, it's not a real game. And I feel like I worry that when I do move a couple of copies of these, I already made some here. You can see here, there's a bunch of them that people are gonna think that they bought a game and it is definitely not a game. <laughs> of course, I designed stickers for them. So you can see here, I like took an actual Super Nintendo game and then meticulously measured out the size of the label where everything was in terms of spacing and stuff. So you can kind of see how close it is. It's pretty close, like maybe the gradient here, like the fade is not, the transparency I mean is not dark, or it's not bright enough on mine. But other than that, I think it looks pretty spot on. These have a back label too. And I made it as close as possible just because I wanted to make it seem like it was a real game, you know? So I definitely did my research and so these are the labels that my friend printed for me. My normal sticker guy, Abbott. And then there's gonna be a back label on it with a QR code that helps you access a secret menu, I guess you can say, in real life. So if you scan it with your phone, it'll take you to a secret page on my website that we're gonna have pretty exclusive content, some secret stuff, so it should be pretty cool. I'm still working on the content, still making these. They came in these little bags, so I just bagged them for now until I can get the boxes done for them. I even went and sourced like the actual replacement trays for them. 
If you guys have ever had a Super Nintendo, you know that when you open the box, this is what holds the game in place. So the measurements are pretty exact. So they'll be bagged up and then it'll look legit. Like it'll look super real, which is the feeling that I was going for, you know? And that's what I wanted. I wanted something that like, wasn't real, but real, I guess you can say, if that makes sense. This is actually the prototype, the real prototype here. This is the first one that I ever put a label on, and this is an actual game. I think it was my Bulls versus Blazers basketball game. It was the first cartridge that I could find in my stash, and uh, so I stuck a label on it, and this one, I guess you can say, is an actual game, because it is, but it's also not. It was just used more for testing, sizing, and making sure that the stickers and everything fit correctly on it. But, again, real game, not a real game. Old 1990s relic art piece. <laughs> Here's the actual back label of it. And like, it has proper warnings just in case people think that it's a real game. And then these are all going to be individually numbered just because I only made a hundred of these. I don't know if I'm going to make any more. I can't guarantee that I will. But they will be individually numbered and there's going to be a hundred. Probably less than 100 because I'm going to keep some for myself too and maybe for friends and stuff, so... It's just a really unique and uh, period correct um, collectible, you know? again being that it's usually just stuffed in the middle of the shop covered in dust and there are a couple events going on this weekend that are relatively close by so you know why not take the car out I haven't driven this thing in a while honestly it feels weird to just be in a lowered car like because I drive an SUV normally as a daily but it's fun the car is not running great just because it's been sitting so long with old gas in it but you know it feels refreshing to be in this car again it's kind of nice clean 180SX. Got that Type X look. Some bronze TEs. Pretty sure this is the same one that was at the Chronicles meet before. Mm. That cage and everything. How are you doing? Good, how did you do it? Yeah. Long time this mm. nice. I had to make it out here one time at least. Got a droopy gauge. <laughs> I don't know you know this one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Mm. Is it stock SR? Yeah, like literally bone stock. Yeah, well, mm. so with a big old intercooler. Yeah, just for next. Yeah. Yeah. Like 90% of the reason for the signing for this car. That weld cover is sick. Yeah. 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 I like it. It's got like a nice theme going on here. In it, in it engine? Yeah. It's like not the same color as the exterior, but it's close enough. Hmm. In it in my driveway. Nice. Feels good. Yeah. I want one someday. But they're all getting all beat up now, so. And expensive too. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, damn, you did the door panels too? Nice. Shit. Kind of bad, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, these inserts, I mean, this door is not, it's not difficult, right? It's just a matter of getting it to stay. Yeah, it's like the glue I think I used wasn't good enough. Mm. And once I laid it down, I'm like, oh, it's too late now. Mm. Looks fine. Yeah, it looks fine. It looks great. Well, you did the glove box too. 
Yep. That's what I also did before with my Accord. I did everything. I even did the speaker covers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Esteban's fit as usual. We got Anthony's DA. Just got that OG tan interior in here. It's mint. I believe this car used to be his uncle's car. And he bought the car brand new, I think. And then now Anthony owns it. Keeping it in the family. Some spoon wheels on it today. Good look. Over here we got Mike Miles NSX we haven't seen in a while. And Tony's Accord. It's nice to see this car again. With these uh, custom rebarreled MF10s, stop tech brakes. Do the turbo setup in here? It's a carbon duct. Get a better angle over here. It's a rear of custom exhaust. Yeah. Intercooler. There's one over here too. Well, that was a nice drive out to David's meet. Car is still intact. There's like a Honda thing going on down at Greddy tomorrow, like a DA EF meet. So who knows? Maybe I'll drive this thing down there too. I scraped my exhaust earlier. If the tips broke off. <laughs> oh, we're good. It's always nice to see this thing outside. Look at this. Oh, look at this guy. Where the fuck have you been? <laughs> Dad goals right here. <laughs> this is a Volvo. What type of Volvo is this, Jer? This will have a seven series wagon. <laughs> <laughs> the license plate's the best. It's a need for Swede. What happens when you have kids? You start looking at these cars. Right? It just needs a cage. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if it was caged. You said it has porch brakes on it too? Oh shit. Damn, dude. Just get an EK and get one of these. You're set. Alright, close to the EK for You're okay. Why are you being shy? Maybe you speak kind to her, maybe she'll... She's like, what is that? <laughs> this is nice. Mugen kit. Desmond wheels. Mugen wing. Oh shit. I'm going right hand drive. What in the world? Wait, I've seen this car before. Never mind. DC5 Fiasco? Nice. Some purple stuff right here. <laughs> oh, 
Which purple is better? No, no, no. E30 M3, the classic Warsteiner livery. It's funny because every time we see an E30, Dirt, we always see Dirt looking at it, but he never looks at his own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like, why you keep looking at it? You already have one. I like other people better than mine. You should have did a Dursteiner livery on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late. Yeah. Dursteiner. Hmm. Look at the side, look at the side mirror. Look how big the side mirror is, it's fucking pole. insane. <laughs> Damn. It's all carbon. Look at the exhaust. It's like full carbon body. The mirror is fucking insane, dude. Beautiful. I just don't know how to appreciate it correctly. <laughs> I'm liking your uh, UK updates. Yeah. Johnny Grunwald's TCP Magic FD. It's a packed house tonight. <laughs> I look crazy right now, I know. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Joey? Hi. Hey, I like the vlog, man. Yeah, Thank you. Right I'm Jonathan Wong, and you're at Ready for the EF versus DA meet. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Junior Asper's Mugen CRX, Generation 1. Mugen MR5s on here. It figures it's a Mustang. It's another AT Civic right here. This is the one that we saw at the last meet, also. This is the one that still has the. Weber carbs on here. <laughs> so I am Honda battery. <laughs> the old school Marshall fuel pressure regulator. CRX SI on Mugen CF48 wheels. The B18C in here. Yeah, dude. I can't remember. Everything still looks very OEM. Is this Kenji's car? No, right? Is it? Oh, was one of the other. Kenji's cars from Gritty. He even has the HMO stamp too. 
It's a stamped B18C. Oh, man. Oh, man. Nice. <laughs> There's a kid building a rock statue. Oh yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely Kenji's car. <laughs> oh. This is the car that everybody is more familiar with, of course. This is the one that's turbocharged. It's a turbocharged B18C. Turbo there. Ignition projects coils. He has a custom water to air, I mean air to water intercooler that's routed into this box. You can see the line right here. This is the shortest XRP hose ever. <laughs> so sick. Mm hmm. There's so many little knickknacks on it. Yeah. AC powered. I like that oil cap is. Yeah. such a tight fit, but everything is very well You can tell that he's had to try to fit a couple things. Look how close is <clears throat> the downpipe is to the, or the dump tube is to the AC compressor. Yeah. Black hardware. If you're not drinking or eating, we're gonna require you to have the mask. Appreciate it. Thank you. Full size coil red. <laughs> so it has all the labels. <laughs> JDM hood. The KQ Project SSR Defi Challenge wheels. Stuff you can't find. I put it in a bag so that I use this right one. That's crazy. This is Matt Ricaro seats. Very nice. <laughs> oh, look at that. Dude, look how many cool sides like. He's all. Well, how about those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally get to see Dave's DA again. Yeah, you. He like just stuffs this thing in the garage and never brings it out. It's kind of like my car. But. This is one of the best DAs ever built, guys. Got NSX brakes behind there. And these Takichi Project SSR EXC fins. Look like the NSX color perceptive in zinc. One of the few guys rocking the tan interior and pulling it off. Carlos in here. I should have more asses here. Did you have to bring out the old Chronicles t shirt too, man? Take a look at back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't even have my own shirt anymore. I <laughs> Yeah? Oh, Chewy does that too. Yeah. Come on, man, we're old school. Yeah, you dry cleaning your t-shirts. See the Bugen steering wheel. Is this still leaking? Is it flat? Yeah, I think so. I think the barrels are tire or not the tire. It's not the tire, it's a barrel. Yeah, this is so old. 
Fix a phone. Fix a phone <laughs> just to see. <laughs> <laughs> The next Miracle X bar. So I got, um, I bought yeah, some. Yeah, uh, so clean. I bought some. Uh, I got a brand new. I bought a brand new. And then I. Yeah, is that Mugen exhaust down here? Oh, with the yeah, with the MF10 bronze. I got the decals and everything. So I just did the polish lip. Yeah, like the polish. Yeah, to the MF10s. Yeah. So for a one piece wheel, you know, is it anodized? Yeah, it's anodized in the the face and. Mugen wing. Yeah, you rarely ever see the next Miracle X bar with the top bar right here too. Pretty crazy. It's the old school right here with the system built into the trunk. False floor. But isn't there like different versions of RSGs where it's one of those back doors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some black T's on here? Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Connects to the harness barn. Oh, wow, this guy has a whole kit. <laughs> Personal wheel, S2000 cluster. Oh, that shifter. SCAE shifter? Oh no. Tiny mirrors. Excuse me. And also has a HMO stamped B18C in here. Comtech airbox. This is the one that Dur has been looking for. Nice setup. Shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down. It's game over. Uh, I just got to. The tacos are not free anymore. Charging. <laughs> <laughs> parting out. You parting out. <laughs> Yeah. Old school June mm. Spoon hoses, the really? June valve cover. I didn't know June I actually made them start selling them. That was the first one. June radiant. You just spray that yourself, Before dude. You, you painted that shit. What happened? You painted that shit yourself. Oh, yeah. Fucking. Sp <laughs> <laughs> did do graffiti before. <laughs> People always do it wrong because they do it right in the middle. Yeah. It's yeah, supposed they, to only they, be like right it's here. It's only a sh small corner. Yeah. In real. Oh, yeah, that's real. Yeah. 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 That shit's all fucking tarnished. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Hi. Good. The problem is DA chassis sits all the way good. What's up with this toy car here? Did you fight somebody for this? I heard. I wish I would have recorded the whole story. Yeah. I don't want these seats though. Yeah. Dave is the only one that can pull off tan interior. It's like even like half dash is tan. It's super weird. Got all the goodies. I thought about doing that instead of. K swapped Civic Wagon. Yeah. RBC manifold. Starting to get really sunny out here. Some T's on there. A little splitter. Clean interior. Hmm. 
the SSR GPOs on here. Yeah. Damned lover soul wheels. This guy's got good taste. Got that Louis door panel. <laughs> it's cool. It blends in with the rest of the interior. Some Walter Wolf racing wheels. Starting to get hot. <laughs> so feels goodies on here. I like the stock B sixteen A swap. More fields. Yeah, 38,000 miles is pretty much brand new and a 30 year old car. So. This is the Wanabi wheels, caps. Uh, I registered him, but I Mint interior. You should like expect no less with these types of cars at this age and people bringing them out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's gather speakers. Low-key daily, nothing special here. Kind of just blends in with the parking lot perfectly, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people don't like people that have cars on air suspension, but I mean, they typically drive my car at this height, so it's, it's not too different than not being on air. But it just helps me get up and down driveways, so. But I still like my cars nice and low. Yeah. Got some much needed lunch. Some coffee, my usual string cheese. 
Time to head back home. for me to drive this thing but whenever I do it like I guess it gives me this feeling of nostalgia you know because when I first bought this car I really didn't I really didn't have anything I didn't have any money at the time I wasn't really set anywhere in career wise or had a I didn't even have a job when I bought this car actually because I sold my I sold my Accord to buy this car back then just because it was a good deal and, and it seemed like the right thing to do at the time you know it was like the right feeling I guess then I, I mean, it's been 14 years, but anytime I do get into this car, it's, it still does feel, it makes me feel like, you know, like I'm in my 20s again and just like enjoying life carefree and worrying about all the little things like when I'm gonna be able to pay rent or what I'm gonna do with my life. And now that I'm a little bit more settled down, like, you know, life-wise, it's nice to get back into this thing because, you know, it brings back these familiar feelings. And I think that's kind of the beautiful thing about having a car that you can work on and having a project car or a build that you can just enjoy in your spare time. Like, do I really want to drive this car all the time? No, just because, honestly, like, having having air suspension, honestly, is just kind of a hassle. No, thinking about it, like, I, I got out of convenience back then just because I could keep the car really low and then whenever I needed to get up driveways and stuff, I still could. But. I mean, just getting around now, it's just kind of a pain in the ass, but I do love this car. Like, will I ever let it go? I mean, I'm sure I would for the right price. Does it, would anybody want this car? Probably not. It's very much catered to my taste and like, you know, the, the color palette and everything is very much like a, a well thought out process by me. So I just don't feel like anybody else that owned this car would appreciate it in that way. It's, a, it's just one of those things that I'll hold on to just because really not worth anything to anybody else. It has a lot of uh, sentimental value to me. And it's just a fun car to cruise in every now and then, you know? I love it. Convince somebody to drive that fucking thing. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sturz is out here testing his Japanese siren, so we'll finally get to know what it sounds like. If it lives up to all the hype that he built up for it. I needed to scream in my face. Is it clockwise? Mm. Where is the speaker? It's right here. Oh. What is it saying? Uh, it's just saying it's, uh, it's disengaged. Okay. Uh, so it's like the security system has been disarmed or disengaged. I wonder what Dis happened. Disarmed. Like if it speaks, if, if the alarm goes off. Oh. Yeah. What's she gonna go into like a. Can you open this door? I'm covering the si this siren so it's not all loud. Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> 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 what did it say? Oh, sorry, I was listening to Morris. He was, just, he was, I heard him start going. Oh, I was like, but he, he only took it like 3,000 RPM. Sorry, what was it? Go ahead. What did it say when the alarm went off? Oh, uh, it said emergency, emergency. Oh. <laughs> Wait, hold on, you didn't hear her? I don't understand. She said it in English. She said emer emergency, emergency. Yeah. Oh, she did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, this is the wholesome content of you. Do it again? Open it? Hold on. Emergence! Emergence! Door Oh, so the door has been opened. Mm. Oh. Right now? Mm. It's not yeah, even it's open. Emergency, emergency, the door has been opened. But like, who are you telling? The person who opened the door? Yeah. When you arm it, is it going to say, I will do my best? Okay. No, it, it says, it open says, the door. Emergence! Emergence! Door 
Are you just trying to get the, the burglar a good laugh? <laughs> Oh, it should be unarmed though. Uh oh, now it's broken. Now she's gonna start speaking with the driver. Or somebody has entered through the door, rather. It should be fine now, right? Somebody is inside you. Oh, I get it. So basically, if it's, the alarm it's telling you what, what happened, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which trigger yep. happened. Mm. So how Which, about, okay, let's um, open the, uh, the hatch. Oh, okay, okay it just, it, now it's on? Yeah. It's armed. Yeah. You good? Emergency. Emergency. Somebody is inside you. I didn't do shit. What the fuck? Okay, hold on. Let me, let me try again. Maybe now it's like going through. Maybe I need a uh, reset. The, uh, yeah. What if you just start speaking in the middle of the night? That's kind of scary. Oh, it's outside. <laughs> so reset. Okay. Yeah, she's so limited in her vocabulary. Yeah, she's not even saying where. Mm. Now, can I close it? Yeah. And then and basically open it and disarm? Okay. Nope, nothing. She, she only likes doors. Mm. So we killed the door, man. The trunku is open. <laughs> Have you tried a different language uh, option? Maybe that like, they just never English. Like they weren't mm -hmm. able to. The English uh, one sounds stupid. Well, I mean, yeah. I meant like for the for the like in other languages, they only did it for like a limited amount of zones or whatever, because you know that's being reasonable. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Uh, yeah, maybe in Japan you can't enter from the back. System. <laughs> you most definitely cannot, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this, though. System disarm. Okay. Oh, okay. Try arm again. Oh. See? So it knows. It's just that the Japanese language back is fucked. Yeah. They, never program, it's not. Yeah. they didn't program the trunk for the Japanese. Maybe the, they hired hired somebody to do the voice and then they entered to the back and she's like, no. Yeah. Please do not enter from behind. <laughs> but they did anyway. Yeah. She's just like, I quit. I cannot receive you. Can you help getting out of it? No, I know how to get out of these things. I'm not that I fat. I totally <laughs> forgot to tell you. Oh yeah, I haven't aligned it yet. As you yes. probably noticed. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> well, like I said, I had, I had up to, uh, a buck 20 yesterday and it was okay. Because I figured you'd be okay. No, yeah, I mean, I just didn't go crazy. But no, I noticed it. Like as soon as you get the second, it's just like, oh, hey. Yeah, yeah, you went all this way? Oh, this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I know the brakes. Uh, I, when you get on the brakes hard, it pulls a little bit, but... Yeah. Sorry, I guess I should have told you You can smell the brakes. Yeah, no, no. no. Uh, the brakes, it's okay. It's, that's only because uh, I, 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 just, uh, I just need to get them. Yeah. It's just, uh, so they're, they're going to be smelly for a bit, but... But I'm a little more heavier, so uh, the, the wheel rubs a little bit more. No, it's fine. <laughs> compared it's fine. to you. It's totally fine. These fenders are... It's a fucking DC5, man. Like, bend them. I don't care. Yeah. Like, like the smash fenders are out of the way. No. It's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. It's a base like, engine. Did you pick up, did you hold on to the cluster while you were driving it? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, quick, quick. Oh, this is the time, those guys want to break a little bit. I have a lot of medicine. I want to get all the wires from it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can, yes. That's crazy. So, 
Because uh, EK Dash is, I don't know, familiar, uncomfortable for me. I'm just kidding. It's because of Christian. It's Christian's fucking birthday and I forgot to get him anything. Yeah. So uh, he always wanted a DC5 Dash. So I was like, oh, let's pull out the car. Okay. Oh hey, actually yeah, this is the Hironori ramen is good. It's fucking good. Which one? Yeah, Hironori down the uh, uh, Santa Fe oh, Spring. Oh yeah, that one. Is legit, yeah. yeah? Fucked up our order last time. Yeah, they fucked up our order. They actually fucked up our order the last two times we went there. Both times. <laughs> I'll see, it's actually coming out so nice. It's not close last episode. I'm using a black one reference. Yeah, I'm wiping <laughs> over it. Yeah. Just re-wetting yeah. it. No, I don't, I don't fuck with... I, I, uh, I think that's as good as it gets. I do, though. I fuck with...